So we've seen now how to fit uh, regression models with, uh, with uh, splines and polynomial regressions. We're going to move on now to generalized additive models. So the first part of this, um, this section of the lab goes through something similar to what we saw for just having modeling wage as a function of age. Uh, we're going to, to skip that to talk about the more interesting aspect of GAMs or additive models, that is when we include more than one feature. So the first model we're going to fit with more than one feature uh, is going to be not necessarily, not strictly a GAM, but it's going to include splines for the wage as a function of age and a function of year. Um, okay, so we'll see we're going to fit natural splines for both of these with different degrees of freedom, and we'll you know, use ordinary least squares regression as we had above for the, the natural spline and B-spline fits. So if you, if you just look in that expression for, for excess, you'll see we've got a, a, a nonlinear term in age, we've got a nonlinear term in year, and then we've also got education, which is a categorical variable, and we're going to be fitting constants at each of the level of those. So we put in all three of these into a model, and, uh, and you'll get these, the, the fits for the two nonlinear functions and this these constants. Yes, yeah, I, I did not mention the, yeah. the education. And uh, this is just to, the distinction between what we've seen before really is that now we have more than one feature, and that's really what makes it an additive model. Um, so often in an additive model, you want to look at uh, the individual effects of each feature, and that's typically done through a partial dependence plot. So I'm not going to go through the, each all the, the steps of the, the code to produce these partial dependence plots. But what, what I want to show here is that for each of the, the features in the model, you get a, a nonlinear function. So here is an estimated effect of the, the nonlinear effect of um, age on wage. And the y-axis here is kind of arbitrary because, there's, you know, because there are other features in the model, unlike uh, when we just had age. That was, you know, we actually had the raw y scale. And we could see that the, the form is actually relatively similar to what we saw before, though it's not quite as flat up here. But it has the same sort of inverted quadratic right. uh, type of fit. So the, the general message here, Jonathan, is that with standard linear models, you get a coefficient for each variable. With additive models, you get a fitted function for each variable. And here we're showing the fitted function for age. But we could, we could show you the function for year, and, uh, and we can show the set of constants for e education. And so it's a nice generalization of, of linear models. Yes, yeah. So we also, as Trevor just mentioned, there's, there will be a fitted function for year as a function, uh, its effect on wage. And there will also be a, uh, oh, we haven't plotted them, but there will be an estimated coefficients for each education level. OK. Um, so what we had just fit there, let's to the right spot. What we just fit there was just ordinary least squares, right? We had, spe we had specified a flexible function for each of the two features and uh, dummy variables for the, the education level. Uh, and it wasn't strictly what's called, what, it wasn't strictly a generalized additive model because it didn't have this smoothing penalty that we saw, uh, we see in, in the, the lectures for chapter seven. So here we're going to do a similar fit uh, using the PyGAM function, the PyGAM library. So linear GAM from the PyGAM library tells us tells PyGAM that we're going to do a regression problem. And PyGAM is not set up um, to, to, to consider um, feature names. It only considers column indices uh, in specifying a model. So this SGAM0 here says SGAM stands for smoother, or uh, sorry, spline for GAM. 0 indicates the, the first column of the matrix that we'll ultimately fit. Uh, and you'll see this XGAM matrix, the first column of it will be age. So we're going to, this is this, a spline for age. Um, if this SGAM 1 with number of splines equals 7, um, this, is, this says that uh, we'll use whatever number n splines <laughs> means for, for year for the second column. OK. I just want to, in, to point out that unlike the model spec, the GAM function doesn't use variable names in, in specifying it. But uh, it's fit using a fit method. And we've written a function in the, in the ISLP package to make these partial dependence plots uh, for, the, um, for, for the fitted model. So I'm just showing you here the, uh, the partial dependence 
plots for age on wage when we don't specify any parameters to the, the SGAM function, the spline function for GAM. Um, so this indicates we'll, of course, want to tune this. So lambda, lambda equals 0.06 is not very smooth compared to the other one. So maybe one thing we could do is we could try to estimate um, an, a lambda that gives us a certain number of degrees of freedom. So here we're going to try and get five degrees of freedom for the, um, for the age term and five degrees of freedom for the year term. And that corresponds to finding these LAM values, these lambda values. Uh, then these are, um, so what we've done is we've modified the lambda values of our original GAM and refit it here. So now let's look at the partial dependence plot. And they, they do, they are smoother than before. And so we've used roughly five degrees of freedom for um, each of these plots, each of these effects. Okay. So here is a plot. This, this is what a partial dependence plot for a categorical variable would look like. It would be a coefficient for each category. OK, so I'm just going to wrap up here with a, uh, an example of how to use binary uh, regression for GAM. What changes really just is the base estimator. Instead of being linear GAM, it's logistic GAM. Things are specified in the same way. Here, one in this, in this GAM, uh, instead of using a spline for year, I'm going to use a linear effect for year. That L stands for, instead of a smoothing spline for an effect, a linear effect. OK, so we fit um, uh, using the same method, the fit method. OK, and then we can uh, look at the partial dependence plots. One thing we see um, in, this partial, in these fits is some rather unusual behavior. Um, for the estimate of people who do not have a high school diploma for high, high, high wage earners. And that's, well, what's happening in this case is there really are likely no people who don't have a high school degree who are making more than 250000 oh. so we can't estimate this parameter. So that causes these estimates to look very variable. So we're going to refit the model, excluding the, 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 the observations that um, don't have more than a high school diploma or less. And now we see, well, we have reasonable estimates of the effects of, um, uh, of being a high earner for the different uh, levels of education. And just like the linear GAMs, we can produce partial dependence plots for each of the, the features. Here, this is the partial dependence plot for year. And I think we have the partial dependence plot for, a for um, age. And actually, interestingly, this one doesn't seem to have that precipitous drop-off that we saw when we just modeled with age. Um, oh, so that's I'm good. Glad news. to see that. Yes, maybe it's because I uh, had a good education. I think so.